Oh, what a privilege to get to introduce our wonderful speaker. Christian Turner is a real blessing, not only to our center, but to the world. In her regular life, although there's nothing regular about her life, she offers high integrity quantum NLP based training, coaching and consulting. She utilizes both ancient wisdom and modern technology in all the work that she does. She's a natural teacher who combines strength and gentleness, which is pretty amazing given your culture, <laughs> uh, to help lead her clients to break through change. She's a leader who highly values community building. She has initiated and organized some amazing community projects, including the annual New Consciousness Expo that has been happening here in Salt Lake since 2005. So if any of you have been to that, thank Christiane. <laughs> she is the perfect mentor for visionaries who think outside the box and want to challenge the status quo and want to make a big difference in the world. So whether you're living your vision or you are deeply motivated to find out what your mission is, with Christian's guidance, you'll be able to take quantum leaps on your journey. She's been a longtime friend of our center. Her talks always inspire us to be better, and her workshops always help us to grow to a higher level. Please welcome back our dear friend, Christiana Turner. She's bringing that spirit of the season to us, isn't she? Hello, everybody. We have this beautiful word in German called Nachklingen. And that means it's that sound wave that's still wafting in the room before our ears cannot hear it anymore, but it's still there. So let's just tap into that again with this wonderful song we just heard. Let's give a big, big, big round of applause to our wonderful musicians for today. And, of course, Rick and his crew, you guys, I mean... When I started coming here, I would bawl my way through these services because I always was so touched by this incredible music that you guys are conjuring up every single Sunday. And I was silently hoping that you would sing that song again that I was able to hear here in person two weeks ago when I was able to be at the service. So thank you so much for sharing that beautiful song with us again, Living from the Overflow. So big round of applause for Rick and his gang. Yay! I want to acknowledge Linda, everybody who is doing service here, who is helping to make this happen, that the center is open to the public and to put these beautiful services together every single Sunday. I know you guys are putting a lot of work into this. And so thank you from the part of our community that gets to enjoy that every day. So thank you, thank you so much for you guys. Okay, and now some of you might be wondering, okay, what is this about? So my friends surprised me because today is a very special day in my life. This is the day that I walked into the NLP community as a very scared immigrant who had just been here a couple of days, uh, years, and I used to have anxiety attacks. You always know what's going on by the, how my cheeks are turning red, and I would just sit there in my very, very first NLP class and started my whole journey knowing that I would dedicate the rest of my life to this phenomenal technology that I was introduced to in 1993 and then in 1994 I took my own training. So thank you Judy and Diane for surprising me with this beautiful setup. And you guys are going to benefit from those teachings that I did learn 30 years ago because they changed my life. They turned me from a panic driven, anxiety riddled, I don't love myself, my life has no purpose kind of person into the person that I get to claim now, and that just gave me goosebumps. So yeah, I love it. I love this journey, and this is awesome, and I love to share this because everybody has that potential. When I can do it, you can do it. And what I did was nothing miraculous. It was just being diligent. I made some decisions in my life. For example, I'm gonna be a world traveler. For example, I'm gonna find ways to put my family and my business under one hat and other things that I declared ever since. So I want to share some of that energy with you. And some of you have been on this journey with me for a very, very long time, and I'm not gonna be able to mention every single, but, but you know who you are. And some of these people, and that's another anniversary, because Kevin and I were talking outside, we don't even know when we met each other and how long I have been a big fan of the center. 
but it's going on 20 years, I think. So I, I really need to look it up. You would know it because um, I know it was Reverend Donald when I showed up here. So that was at Fort Union, remember that, you guys? So then Reverend Elizabeth came and some other reverends, and here we are with Reverend Cindy. And like I said before, I'm so grateful that I was here two weeks ago when she ushered us in to the theme of the month, Living from the Overflow. And she talked about the mustard seed. So I listened to the video a few more times, which also, hello everybody in the outside world who's joining us today. A lot of my friends who can't be here today, I sent the link to, so I hope we got some great numbers. And you guys got some great numbers when I'm looking at it. Hundreds of people are watching the service over the next few weeks. Did you know that? So make sure that you let your friends know who can't physically be here, they can still join us in spirit and in the vortex. Of course, we're all connected. So hello, everybody out there. We love you, and thank you for being us, here with us today. And so now I lost my train of thought. Nice. Backpedal, backpedal. <laughs> what was I going for? See, that's what happens with those live streams. That's what happens with those live talks. Because I do not do it anymore that I'm learning every word. Okay, this is the concept I'm going to park around. Da, 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 da. It just flows. I just trust the overflow. See, mustard seed, there we are. So I just trust that overflow of energy and the information that I've gathered over those last 30 years. And it's not just the last 30 years. This journey started way, way, way earlier when I was a little good girl sitting in Catholic church at nine years old and the preacher was preaching and I'm going, I don't know about this whole heaven and hell thing. I think that we can make heaven on earth. And that was that moment when I became a rebel. And I just, uh, I had a tough time, you know, just swallowing all those things that I heard. And I started thinking for myself, which then ultimately led to my NLP journey. So that little tiny mustard seed grew over time. And what I heard when I first sat here two Sundays ago, it was from our perception. The person plants the mustard seed and then they have faith that that little mustard seed over time is going to turn into a plant. But then when I listened to the service again yesterday, just to refresh my memory, I was like, oh, I misunderstood it. It was the perspective of the mustard seed that the little mustard seed knew what it was going to be. Let that in. That that little seed, no matter what we're talking around us, all these beautiful plants that we share this planet with, as well as our physical expression, the humanity, the mammals, the everything that exists on this planet at some point was that little tiny spark, that idea that you guys talk about. Just an intangible idea. Einstein says it all starts with an idea. It all starts with imagination. The vortex, that's what we call it in the law of attraction. And the second you have the idea, it's real. That was one of the most profound things I ever learned about the law of attraction myself, is that the second I think it, it exists. It's not just some vague identity. It's not just some vague perception. It is real in that moment. It is real as we, as the observer, are collapsing the wave function into an actual particle. And the more energy we're spending in that realm, the more density we are giving those particles. And then more and more particles come together. They form atoms, they form molecules, they form cell structure. And all of a sudden, we have a physical manifested reality. That is the path of manifestation. And I love how Reverend Cindy so very pointedly brought that point across two weeks ago. Idea, law, practice and then physical manifestation these flowers this plum our beautiful friends the fire everything that we can touch and tangibly experience in our environment at some point was just an idea it was something that took form physical form through the act of becoming a particle from a quantum wave in the vortex the divine the akashic record whatever you want to call it and then through our intentionality, through our belief, our unwavering faith, we slowly condensed it into more and more tangible reality. All of a sudden, it became a thought that wouldn't let us go. All of a sudden, it became feelings, emotions. We got elated. We got grateful. We got excited. And then it turned into a physically tangible manifestation. And all of a sudden, we looked back and said, wow, I created that. 
Wow. So now, how does this all relate to overflow? Of course, I can't help it. I have to research words. I have to think about words. What does it really mean? So when we think about overflow, the first thought that came to my mind is like, well, a sink has an overflow, a bathtub, right? So when you leave the water on in your bathtub and you forget about it, what happens? There's the overflow so that the extra water, instead of coming out onto your bathroom floor, goes back into the pipeline. And I thought, what a cool metaphor is that? And when we take it from the law of attraction's point of view, then it's about vibration. The reason I was bawling, I mean, seriously, like my body's like, <laughs> you know, when you're just so overflowed with energy. And my mom always used to say to me that one of my cute moments when I was a little kid was we were in some kind of a concert or some event that was going on. I was just crying my heart out. And she says, oh my goodness, what's going on? Are you in pain? Is something wrong? I'm like, no, I'm just so happy. And that is my reality. I don't cry because I'm mad or sad. I'm crying because I'm so freaking overflowing with energy, with so much buzz, I cannot contain the energy. And that's usually gratitude. I'm getting touched by something. Of course, my easiest example these days are my three granddaughters. We were at the treehouse yesterday up in Ogden, one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen for little kids to run around. And there was so much stuff that these guys could explore in the almost four hours that we were there. And trust me, running three kids in four hours, seven, four, and two years old, I was the one who said, okay, we come home, I take a nap now. And they're still running. They're like, where's the jungle gym? Let's keep working off that energy. But they all slept 10 hours last night. So there was such an overflow of stuff that these kids could do. We were not able to go to every single part of the museum and explore it. And having that vivaciousness, that aliveness, that ah, oh, that they have, that curiosity, and oh, Oma, 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 like I said to my friend Joni, I'm like, I only heard the word Oma 500 times yesterday, where they just keep going, okay, there's the knights, and there's this puzzle, and there's the dinosaurs, and there's the police. So we actually played police yesterday, where someone lost their puppy, and then my grandkids, as the police force, got to find the puppy. I mean, that gives me goosebump. That is my happiness, to share my life with these little spirits who just are in awe all the time. They are in overflow of energy. They are in overflow of abundance. They don't know limitations. They don't have a concept of that. And that's that childlike, innocent spirit that I want to bring into my own life again and to forget all those thoughts about good and bad and duality. And so that actually is really, really deep law of attraction now because I promised myself I'm going to go down the rabbit hole with you guys today. And I'm going to say some stuff because I really would like, my, the intent I set for myself today is I want everybody here today, watching us, being here, coming to the workshop, however you're going to interact with this information today, to walk away with some skylight or some window or some door in your soul being open to some new possibilities. And some of you might be suffering right now and you might be carrying something in your heart that you've been tossing over and over and you're laying awake at night and you don't know what the solution is and you have been thinking about it already for months. And some of you are on your mastery journey and you've got new opportunities that you're embracing. Whatever your walk of life is right now, everybody just imagine opening something in yourself that gives you some new possibilities, some new way of thinking about yourself, life, the mustard seed that you are, putting it into the action, which is what Reverend Cindy talked about last week, and then physically believing in that manifestation by trusting the paths of creation. And that is exactly where I'm going to go now down the rabbit hole, because some of you have heard me talk about it before, hermetics the teachings of Hermes. And he is one of those people who has been deified over time because he is known as the scribe of Isis, the goddess of Egypt. And ultimately, in my belief system, he was a normal dude, a normal teacher, who was just really brilliant. And he was able to tap into the seven universal laws. And that's what he's teaching. And for those of you who are really interested in that, Google it. It's the Kybalion, K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. I'll be happy to write it down at the workshop. I'll be happy to give you the reference later. 
And he wrote that fantastic book. Actually, the book is written about him because he was thousands of years ago. And there are some scrolls. A lot of people talked about the emerald tablets. That's where you can also read about the seven universal laws. And guess what? That's exactly what you guys are teaching here. Because the first law is that everything is one. It's all one. And the Tao is so wonderful at explaining to us how then the one turns into the two. And you also see that in the Kabbalah. The one cannot create itself. That's the elusive vortex energy. The vortex energy has to turn into the male and the female energy, which has absolutely nothing to do with men and women. It's the male principle and the female principle that then combines to then create the three things, the child, and then ultimately the 10,000 things, which we call our physical reality. Energy is the carrier of that vibration. And that energy can be up or it can be down. And that's what I consider the overflow. The overflow is when we're vibrating so high that we're just buzzing. You can feel it physically when your energy vibration is so high because you are in a place of gratitude and awe, amazement, nirvana, blessings, connection with God and the universe, your divine knowing your divine self. I loved how you said that, Lana. When we acknowledge that we are God, and don't get hung up on that word, that's just a word we put on it, because it's undescribable. We have so many words around the world for that thing that we know. In Hermetics, we call it the all. And when you are coming from that place and you have that beautiful connection with all of it, and then you're not getting up in those moments of doubt. When you keep furthering this path through meditation, through prayer, through giving service, through being present. That's one of the things that Sean asked me before he passed. He says, I want you to be present because he knows me. When we were singing the song, the first beautiful song that you guys shared, I had a moment, just a tiny little moment of going, huh, this is the time when I would have my anxiety attack before going on stage, because I used to be Mrs. Heart Palpitations, Sweaty Hands, I'm turning red. Oh my God, I'm going to forget what I'm going to be talking about. Oh my God, what if they don't like me? No, seriously, that used to be my old me. And I've put a lot of, I don't want to say work, a lot of prayer and meditation into the fact of changing that, because I knew the new me cannot live like that anymore. I don't want to show up like that. So I sang the song, I was present in the song, I was present in your meditation, and then coming up here, I can be fully present with you guys. And that is one of the most beautiful gifts that my husband gave me to challenge me to not waste my time and my energy by being anywhere else but in the moment. Just like I didn't think about the presentation yesterday while I was running around with my grandkids, setting up Knight's Castles. <sighs> Do you feel that? Being present in the now, putting your mind towards what it is that you want, that idea that you conjured up in your mind, and of the billions of ideas that you could have conjured up, why those? Why am I crazy about, I want to see the world? I want to live on these three continents that I happen to be involved in for 15 years now, that for some reason the universe brought to me. What a trip, could have not seen that when I dedicated myself to that past three uh, decades ago, I didn't think I was going to have those three gorgeous little grandkids that I get to share my life with and many other things. And I would like for you to entertain that in your own life right now. Some of those ideas that you conjured up, perhaps in your childhood. Did you know that I was a little kid and when my uncle started traveling in southern Utah, with the RV, the way Germans do it, going all around the Southwest, and then they end up in Hollywood, and oh, we get to go to the Grand Canyon. Wow. And I said to myself, I want to live there. I also said to a friend of mine when we studied Egyptology, when I was about 9, 10 years old, and we were having all these beautiful posters that we had made about Egypt and the ancient culture and you know, some of their death rituals and the building of the pyramids and all that. And I was like, hey, I'm going to touch those pyramids. And I have manifested three trips to Egypt. And I'm currently actually researching another one. It's one of those little ideas that I'm planting some seeds for. 
And those are things that you have done as well. There are things that are currently in your life that are totally normal to you, where you don't even think about it, that were planted many, many, many decades ago. There were seeds that you planted when you were a youngster, teenager, young person. There are seeds that you're planting right now. I would like for each one of you to think about one of those seeds right now. And just through the fact that you're having that thought right now, you are already within the manifestation process. You are already right now actively manifesting. And I would like for you, if there's any doubt in your heart right now or any kind of, I don't know how I'm going to do it, let's just embrace it and love it. So it can come up to the vibration of your beautiful idea that you're entertaining right now and fully support you with it doesn't matter how it's going to happen because I know it will. My job is to concentrate on the what and not so much on the how. I know there is a way, otherwise I wouldn't be thinking it. And bring up your vibration right now to a place of gratitude, presence, allowing, receptivity, to just let it be and dwell in that beautiful knowingness that right now that energy that you're putting into that thought is real and it's already a particle that has already attracted other particles that are currently forming into atoms which are forming into molecules which are ultimately going to form into actual tangible physical representation. Breathe that in, and then make a wish. Make a wish to the universe right now to support you in helping you to be present in the magnificence of the unfolding of that idea into true physical reality. And that is the teaching of Esther Hicks and Abraham to be here and have fun. This is not hard work. This is not about striving and making it happen and the footwork we have to put into it. This is about sitting back and allowing it to happen and to manifest itself right in front of your eyes as you are aligning your joyful thoughts, emotions, and actions to then bring it into physical reality. And with that, I would like to invite us to pray. As we take that information that I just shared with you, which was all very heady, very left-brained, a little bit of science sprinkled into it, stuff you've heard before, perhaps some stuff that you heard today for the first time or in a new way, and to let that energy now flow into this beautiful sphere supported by that wonderful soundscape. To be able to settle into your mind, your brain and your heart. And I would like for your soul to give you a big hug right now because your soul is rejoicing right now. Ah, there you are, my friend. There you are. Your soul is healthy, complete, and 100% part with the all, with the one. That is that part of you that is the one. God, the universe, the quantum field, right here, right now. So give yourself to this beautiful embrace of who you truly are. Let that energy flow into your crown chakra as a beautiful column of rainbow light. Open it up like the lotus flower as it now travels into your third eye, a beautiful, beautiful purple, opening up your third eye, seeing the vision of what's possible, 
knowing that this is your truth. And now that beautiful energy can flow down into your throat chakra, opening it up in this wonderful color of blue, speaking your truth, knowing who you are, no need to hide. And now that energy flows into your heart in the most wonderful, beautiful green. You are God's child. You are the manifestation of the universe in its perfection and glory. Here to enjoy the walk on this planet, opening your heart, being fully present in what is. And now that wonderful energy can flow into your solar plexus just above your navel, opening up that wonderful yellow light, claiming your power, knowing who you are, why you're here, and letting that energy now flow into your creative center, which is under your navel, into the most wonderful, beautiful, glowing orange. And now all of that energy settles into the color red as you imagine yourself being Buddha sitting on the red lotus flower because you're Buddha too and he loves that. Be one with the universe and take that wonderful idea and many, many others that you're currently entertaining and know that they are. They always have been, and they always will be. And you are the observer who has the joyful task of bringing them into physical manifestation. And so it is. And that physical manifestation also includes financial abundance. And this center is so important to so many people out there. I would like for you to think about the ripple effect that this center is able to extend into our community. And it's not just Salt Lake City, it's also going into Utah and in connection with all the other centers into the whole world. So I would like for you to very specifically bless your offering to the center today. In whatever form you are making it today or you have already made it or you will make it. And you know that there are many channels that you can use to bless the center and to help it fulfill its goals for the next year. By now, giving from a place of overflow and abundance, knowing that this abundance will be put to good use in enabling the center to move many, many years into the future. And this is what I absolutely predict with the way things have been changing over time, that a center like the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living will attract more and more people of all ages, of all walks of life, so that we can constantly support each other and celebrate with each other that fantastic teaching that the universe wants us to manifest in this lifetime. This is a time of incredible transformation, you guys. We are blessed to be here right now. And what seems a little crazy on the surface is just part of that chaos that needs to happen in order to get order again. It's just part of the universe, the yin and the yang. So know that as you're contributing today to the flow of the center, as we all stretch out our hands and bless the beautiful offerings that have been given, then I'm going to encourage you to please do that. <laughs> <laughs> so in the flow. <laughs> so, so do it again. I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed.
You are really blessed. You're giving. Now we get to bless it again together by stretching out our hands towards this wonderful, tangible manifestation, which was one of those phenomenal principles I learned here in the center when the person up here was talking about how money is the easiest thing to manifest. And I went, what? But now I understand because it is a beautiful, tangible, physical manifestation of the love and the abundance of the universe. So really put that mind frame around that wonderful blessing today that is going to flow into the center to help with all the logistics and everything else that needs to happen so that this center can manifest itself many, many decades into the future and serve thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Blessed be and so it is. Thank you.